Hang on, let me. My phone's not working. Hello? Hello? Yeah, sorry. Yes, who's yeah. this? Alana Devine from the SPCA. Oh, hi, Alana. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. How are you? Good, good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I got your message. I, listen, we, uh, you know, I know you met with Nick. I, I'm aware of. Well, originally, uh, when I met some with. Of the, some of the things that are going on, and basically, the, the, what I explained to landlord, I in no way, shape, or form am a friend of Barbara's, near or am I representing, but at the time, he contacted us to find out if he could lock her out. Um, he wanted to lock, simply lock her out of the building. What I explained to him is. He, he, he can't do that. He can't lock them out, and if the cats starve, ultimately, it's more to protect himself than anything. He, he has to go about it by virtue of the appropriate channel. So right. whether that be true, you know, again, making a complaint to my pack, uh, dealing with the city in terms of um, bylaw issues, I wanted him to just understand that as frustrating as it may be, he couldn't, he, he should take the, the necessary channels to do what he can to evict her, if that's what need be, but he can't just lock her out because if the cat's starved because he's locked, right. he's but locked now her out. So that's, that's all, the only reason I was providing him with information, not in any way, shape, or form, on behalf of her, on behalf of anybody, but rather just from a legal perspective so he understands it's, and I think he's a nice guy who doesn't... He want, is. He's a, I, would, I don't think he wants any harm to come to the cat. No. He just totally understands that it's not, especially given the information I've been given about that shelter and the way that things work, that he doesn't want to put himself in the situation where he's going to be responsible for, for cats and not receiving food, basically. Well, that's it. As far as the food and water is concerned, I mean, we were in there yesterday, and she's got these, you know, those litter pans filled. Like, she dumps a 25-pound bag of cat food. There, There's a little mountain. I don't know if he just put the food when we went, but, yeah, there's bins, like huge, huge bins of food that are available all through the place, and she's got these pails of water. I mean, I don't think there is... I'm not even sure if there is running water because their sink is off the wall. I think the cat's knocked it off. But she does have pails of water inside a closet in which I found two cats in the but closet. If, if, there, if, if, let's say, the, 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 and we've had this situation in many other cases, unfortunately, where, like, the landlord, not just knowing not what to do, like, locks, and especially if cats are in cages and don't have They're access, not. You know, they're not okay, in cages. They're, they're all loose. There's one room that we call what we think to be the infirmary because the cats in there are in teeny little carriers with puke in the bottom and like really gross they're not moving uh but yeah that's a closed room and as we opened doors cats were running in and out of there from the other rooms uh and then right. we had like about a dozen black feral cats that just i mean i'm afraid of cats i walked into a place with a hundred cats and let me tell you this is not what I was expecting because I'm afraid of cats because they jump at you. They come out of nowhere. They rub their heads against your legs. Like, these cats were not moving. And if anything, if we got near some of them, they would run off, like, hiss and run off. Like, so she's got a dozen black cats that, I mean, these cats, I don't even know how we could even trap them, forget, you know, finding them homes. But here's what the, op because the food and water, there's obviously plenty of now, he did go in there one day and find a dead cat because there's only somebody who comes in twice a week. Her Glenn guy, he, well, he comes in on garbage days, Mondays and Thursdays. And then she comes in at night, around 12. Um, and she doesn't stay very long. She comes in about for an hour. So I don't think she does any cleaning because Barbara is not the cleaning one. She does paperwork probably and then she leaves. Uh, what I saw there was, I mean, I know they've been cleaning up since the media was in there because the guy upstairs tell me the stench is a third of what it was before the media came in, and they've had a crew in there cleaning up. What I saw yesterday was like, my God, this has been cleaned up? Like, what was it like before? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, again, I, I you know, I... Now, I if, he locked, I if he locks the place up for refusing access to Barbara, but yet we... Have as, long, as long as the cats are receiving, he, he just wants them, as long as the cats are receiving, and now from a civil liability, I mean, I don't know, I, it's not my area of expertise, I, all I can say is as long as the cats, there's no, um, as long as the cats are receiving food and water from somebody, if he wants to do it, I don't see, there, there's no issue, at least in terms of animal welfare legislation, there's not a problem to, to go about his normal channels as a landlord, he just, to protect himself, needs to make sure, I mean, it's, it's crappy, but basically he becomes, as soon as he locks 
or out, he becomes the guardian of those animals. Right. So, so if he puts someone else they in need, charge, he needs to provide. So basically. basically, if he puts someone else in charge, just kind of like what Cindy did with Monica, she just changed the locks, signed a new lease with the landlord, took over and her shelter with he, all her tasks. As long as he, like again, I, in terms of landlord-tenant like issues, I'm not. 100% familiar, but I mean, basically, unfortunately, animals are considered property, and, and normally the way that it works, you know, with, with landlords, uh, who have tenants who aren't paying is that they can go through the, you know, either through the AG, um, Not for a commercial I mean, lease. Commercial lease, the landlord has the right to send a letter. Uh, it's not a, it's not a, okay, it's not a residential lease. It's yeah, not, it's no, it's a commercial. commercial lease. Right. Uh, it's a commercial lease. we, um, I mean, so, I mean, as long as he goes through the, the avenues that he needs to do as a landlord, and, and again, it's, it's property, but it's property that's susceptible to the like, it's, right. it's property yeah. that needs to be maintained, provided that he, he becomes the guardian and he ensures that the property is maintained, i.e., Okay. So my in next respect to uh, to ensuring that the cats, you know, get the the care that they needed, then I don't see again. This is in, I'm giving you in for how I right. how I yeah. in terms of the law. Like I don't think there's a problem. So all all I wanted him to understand was that he needed to make you know and, and you know I I understood he was very frustrated because he was like, why can't you come get the cats? And I was like, it just doesn't like it's it just it's not that simple. It doesn't work like that. I and I I think it's very frustrating for someone who's who's so frustrated now, with the situation and, and is like, why isn't there an easy answer? And, and there should be an easy answer. It's a frustrating situation. And I think he was like, well, you're telling me this, but you're not giving me a solution. And I was like, I just want you, like, you know, I, guess, right. I don't know if you were involved at the time, but I just wanted him to have an understanding, particularly in a situation with someone who my understanding is very litigious, um, you know, well, of what... As what far as what not. his responsibilities were. So there's no, it's not a question of bullying in any way, shape, or form. I don't think he has to continue to permit a tenant who he has grounds to uh, remove her from a commercial premises to, to stay there, but he has to ensure that he's also, as the guardian of the animal, once, once that person or anybody else who is, I guess, a guardian of the animal is no longer able to access the animal, he becomes the, he right. becomes the guardian and he's okay. responsible. So let's, hypothetically, let's say that he gives us access to take care of these animals while we manage to get them out. Uh, so we go in regularly, Rick and I, we clean, we feed, we give uh, water. Now, as far as medical care, I mean, it's obvious these cats are not well, but, you know, I'm not going to bring in a vet. I, I know somebody, Susan, wants to bring in a vet, but a vet cannot just tell by, I mean, I'm no vet and I'm no idiot. I can tell these, dogs, these cats are not well. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a vet, I'm not even a vet technician, but to look at these cats, it's obvious that 90% of them, if they're physically well, then they're obviously not, you know, not thriving, that's for sure. So hypothetically, let's say the landlord gives us access. He says, okay, I'm putting her out, changing the lock, you guys can come in there, feed the cats, take care of the cats. If right. I mean, it's, it's a pro the problem is, in those situations, there is, unfortunately, um, under the, in other provinces, there's a definition of an abandoned animal. So, for example, an animal that is on a property where uh, the lease has expired or is left for 48 hours without a tenant. So, in this case, in a sense, if we were in another province, because the animals are technically in a property where the lease has expired, if she is no longer paying her rent and he's evicting her, um, technically from that moment forward, there would be a, a, a solution. But it, unfortunately in Quebec, it's sort of a legal no man's land because once he does that, what is his obligation then? Who who owns the animals once he's... Well, that's uh, it. He doesn't it's become the automatic owner of the animals. Right. It's, not a, there, it's, it's a legal no man's land. That's okay. the problem. But as, as a, a rescue, I'm a, I'm a rescue. Even though I do dogs, I don't do cats. I'm a rescue. I'm a, cha a charitable organization yes. registered. If he surrenders these cats, for instance, to me and my son. My son I lives in England. Uh, the question is, the problem is there's no, there's nothing under the law that says that he has the legal power. Like, that, it, it, I'm telling you, it's a... Well, yeah, but that's up to, that's not uh, up to Barbara. The that we deal with often in the sense of, like, we have a situation where uh, someone even, even leaves their animal in an apartment for a certain number of days. It's not enough for cruelty charges, but the landlord brings the animal to us, and then the person comes and wants the animal back, and we're like, well, we don't have enough, unfortunately. Like, the animal was left with a cat or dog or food or right. whatever, but they're, they, their furniture's all gone. 
one. There, what is the circumstances? It's, it is a legal gray zone. That's the problem. Okay. So I, I don't have, um, you know, we, we, when we have cases like that, sort of on a case by case basis, we even, you know, having two people here with a with a legal background, it's a very, um, unfortunately, there isn't anything in terms of legislation that dictates um, in a situation like that. Like the the law, unfortunately, has not considered how exactly what the circumstances are to determine like transfer of ownership or seizure. Again, yes, there could be a municipal seizure, but in this case, it's not the municipality. It's him uh, exerting his rights as a landlord. So right. I, I I don't I don't have the answer for because you. Because the way surrender them to you, but the question is, is he the legal owner? Does he have the power to surrender them to you? And and the answer is, the law isn't. Isn't clear. Right, but um, he see, might have to take an action. He might have to try and take an injunction. Okay, but um, see, the way the law works with commercial leases, because my son's had one once, uh, uh -huh. the way the wor it works is that if the landlord uh, is not being paid or whatever reason decides he wants to evict his tenant, he sends him a letter and says, "Okay, you got to be out. Your lease is expired. You're not paying whatever." The the tenant doesn't do it. The landlord has the right to just come in, change the lock, keep all the furniture in there to sell to recoup his rent, or if it's all garbage, he has the right to put it out on the sidewalk and let the person come and get it. Now, because we're talking about live animals, he would then be allowed to seize the animals and, for instance, sell them to recoup his lost money. If he gives them to us, he's then surrendering them, as though it was a desk that he doesn't want. It's an old desk. It doesn't look like much. I can't sell it here. I'm giving you the desk. Now, I, he I don't have the... I, I don't have the... I, I'd love to say I have a definite, I don't have No, I'm telling you, you, I'm telling you that yeah, what, that's okay. what so the I mean, law is, that I mean, if it's then, an old then death. You, I mean, you're, then you, you've answered, you know, you've answered your own question in the sense right. of like, but wait. Me, once, once there's somebody else involved in caring for the animals and he's not putting himself in jeopardy, right. like, okay. even if mean, he cares about cats, but even if he didn't, you know, I dealt with landlords, he's like, I'm going to walk my tenant out, I'm leaving the dog in there, I don't care what happens right. to the dog, I have to say, well, you may not care, but if that dog dies because you're not giving them food or water, you could be subject to uh, right. a similar penal liability. You want to okay. be very careful, or even civil liability. You want to be yeah. super careful. So as long as he has measures to ensure that the animal, but not an expert in civil well, liability, but if you as would long let as he me... has measures in place to ensure that the animals are being cared for, i.e. with yourself or anybody that you work with, the concerns that I was expressing to him that he should be worried about are no longer present. No, yes, they are, because if he surrenders these cats to us, well, I'm not keeping 100 feral cats. I'm going to surrender I, I them. I'm telling you, the answer to the question I know is that if he becomes the guardian, he has to worry about issues with respect to the care of the animals, but I don't know the answer to the question right. in terms of pro the property issue. And that's not a problem. I will take, I mean, if Barbara wants her cats back, she can go after me. I will tell her, the landlord gave me the cats. And go after me. Okay, so what, I mean, what's your, I, I, you My say, question right? is, once they have been surrendered to us, they become our property. We don't want to keep them. We don't want to abandon them. We then want to surrender them to the SPCA. We're not, we're, I, I, we are not in a, in a place, I'm sorry, to take on. I mean, that's, that's something I... So what, what do we do with them? We bring them to the know. pound? Uh, what? What do we do? We bring them to the different towns? I mean, in Quebec, you're allowed to give up your animal. You're not allowed to abandon him, even though people do all the time. But you're allowed to give up an animal to a pound or to an yeah, SPCA. But, so, I, can't, I can't tell you that the SPCA is going to take on 200 and something cats in a matter that's going to be, you said you don't mind her going after you, in a matter that's going to be litigious. And quite frankly, it's a little unclear, kind of illegal. I, I'm still not 100% sure about the property issue. Like, that's not a decision. Well, if she wants them if back. You're asking me to ask the SPCA, can we take in 200 and something feral, sick, X, Y, Z cats from a municipality that we don't serve? I, that's something that I have to talk to, like, our executive director, our animal care director. Like, that's not a decision. I can't answer that to you. All right. If no, they I have, have no to idea. be brought to the Berger Blanc, they will. But we all, you know, I don't want to be looked at the, oh, she's a bad cat killer who brought them to Berger Blanc. That's what I'm trying to avoid. But if that's the only option, if you're telling the SPC won't step up to the plate, at the okay, annex, I can't tell you because if anything, it's not a question I can answer right now. If anything, these cats could be put in there, and then if Barbara wants to come and get them out, she can deal with you guys in yeah, taking them out. This, it's not, we're not in a position, uh, again, this is like sort of a, um, she can deal with us, you can't just that, put that on the SPCA 
do without us under having an understanding. One of the we're not even the municipality that has jurisdiction in the area. No, but it's my son. From. If my son ends up the legal owner, then he is in your juris in jurisdiction. Well, you need to. I, I don't. I'm not convinced from what you're telling me that he is the legal owner of the cats. I, I I'm not. If they are surrendered to me, to us, like my son is the investigator. I'm just the driver. If this landlord surrendered these cats to my son. If you are an individual citizen, anybody from anywhere, and you wanted to surrender 200 cats to the SPCA, this is something I would need. I can't answer. I'm not the animal care manager. I'm the director of advocacy. I don't oversee operations. I'm not the executive director. I will sit down and talk to Nick about it, but this is like a lot bigger of a conversation than just you and me over the phone. Yes, but something needs to be done before she gets all these cats out of there. Because I'm not sure if you know, you've, I'm sure you've heard of Ann Gillibrand over the years, my story. Oh, I haven't. It's okay. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, well, I'm she's struggling to hide her cats. I, I, I know we've spoken to Nicholas about that. Him and I have talked, to, have talked about this. Um, you know, I, I, I'm giving, I, there's, there's ways, I, you know, I, I believe that the Mapak is involved in this dossier, unfortunately. No, they're not. Started. They're not I'm involved. That information. Um, but, you know, these cases are very complex in the sense that from a legal perspective, when you have a situation in any shelter <coughs> with number, numerous people, particularly when it's a, like, not an organization where there's clearly a, a director and an executive director, and you have dozens of people caring for cats, it's not always simple to determine legally who is the, who is responsible for the care of each and every cat. Now, if you're telling me there's a, there, that in this case, the Mapak knows and you're aware that the only person caring for all of these cats is Barbara, then they, their case is a lot clearer. But if there's 10 people going in there doing various different things... And there is them, nobody caring for the cats. There's one guy who's paid to hang out all day. He comes in twice a week. He picks up the garbage litter boxes and puts them out. Right. And then that's it. There's somebody who comes in and puts food and water once a week. And that's it. Barbara comes in and does a little paperwork or whatever she does, mm -hmm. and then she leaves. Nobody seems to really care for these cats. They're just there. They just live there. They got piles of food. They got about a dozen litter boxes that were filled with shit. And yet the guy was there when we came in yesterday because we thought the place was going to be empty. And face-to-face -face with Glenn, who's wondering why the landlord's coming in, and nobody knew he was even there. So now she's got somebody taking out the place, but we walked in there and there was shit everywhere. It was filthy. It's like, what is the guy doing there all day if he's not cleaning or feeding or doing anything with these cats? Why does he even stay there? So, obviously there's a guy there once in a while, but they're not feeding. The cats don't have bowls. My pack wants bowls. The cats have litter pans filled to the rim with kibble and pails. It's a couple of pails here and there filled to the rim with water. That's what they have. Now, I know my pack doesn't approve of that because the Chao Chao man, he needed bowls. He needed water bowls that were sold all the time. Uh, you know, they had very specific standards. Okay, so, so, be, so be, I, I, sorry, I'm going to cut you off just because, like, I, I mean, I, basically, if you're, if the question isn't, you asked me initially about the lemon, what I'm telling you is that from a, from the information that I can provide you from my knowledge is that there's no issue with respect to um, his concerns. Uh, the information he, he obviously misunderstood that is telling him vis -vis the care of the cats is alleviated by virtue of someone caring for them. But if you're calling to ask me, can the SPCA take in 200 and something cats in X period of time? I can't answer that question without speaking to Nicholas Gilman, our director of operations, our emergency shelter staff. I can't answer that question right now. So if that's something you want me to speak to Nicholas about, I speak well, to I already well, left him a message. Hopefully, he'll call me back. Okay, because, so that's, uh, it's not going to be me that's going to make it. It's going to be him. He's our executive director. I'm not in charge of animal care. I'm not in charge of intakes. It's not my department. So I can't make that decision. I 100% will tell him that you and I spoke and ask him to get back to you ASAP. But I can't answer that question for you right now. It, all right. It Sounds that's, good. All, that's all I can tell you. So I will, you know, let, I, I think certainly you're working with, to, working with the landlord to ensure for the welfare of the cats is, is, a, it is certainly a, a good way to go about um, alleviating his concerns vis-a-vis -vis their care. And I, I mean, he seems, from the little I've spoken to him, I think he's a good guy and I, I think he's stuck in a bad situation. I, I've seen it before in other circumstances and as I said, my understanding in terms of not landlord-tenant issues once there is an eviction or, in this case, once there's a letter sent is that 
what, from what I know, the, the issue of who is the legal owners of the animal, and what is the obligation in terms of, you know, where do the animals have to be held somewhere for a certain number of days, um, that there is a municipal seizure, can the person reclaim them, what cost do they have to pay, how does that work? That is, to me, it's a legal gray zone, an area that, despite what I've looked into, I've never been able to find a clear-cut answer on, on who has ownership, how long do the animals have to be held, do they have to be held in a facility um, that has the, like, generally when we have eviction cases, um, and again, they're usually, they're, they're, there are eviction cases and they're uh, residential, but generally we have either the police or the um, a municipal officer uh, bring the animal, again, from the jurisdiction because we're contracted with the municipality to the SPCA, um, and then we have to hold them for a certain period of time to see if the owner comes in and reclaims them. They're not automatically the prop, they don't automatically become ours or automatically become um, the property of the landlord from what I've seen and how long we have to hold them for, it's a legal gray zone. So that's the information I've had. I, the information I've been able to determine is a situation we deal with often and it's always frustrating because on a case-by-case -case basis I can never find a clear legal answer and to me we need to have what we have in every other province, which is an issue dealing with what is an abandoned animal, including the definition of an animal in a dwelling where the lease has been terminated or is terminated or the person's been evicted. But in your case, I, I don't have the clear-cut answer. So I, I, I and again, I, I don't know, and I, if he, um, you know, if the landlord has someone who is knowledgeable in the area of commercial leases and commercial rights of landlords, he definitely should speak to them about it to get further information, not on the issue of welfare, but on the issue of, like, ownership and his responsibility once once the, the person is, has been left in the building. I, I don't know the answer to that, and I wish I did. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. So my, my take, my guess is that by the time the city gets in there on the 29th, she's going to have scrambled all those cats out, but... Hey, I guess, you know, my idea was not just to have the landlord, but was to stop once and for all this craziness of running cats at midnight from one place to the other. Her her own volunteers don't even have, she ha know she has this clandestine shelter. When they saw it on the news, they're going, that's not us. We're, what, is she, what are they talking about? They made a mistake on the news. We don't have to leave. They don't even know that she has a clandestine shelter because they're crying. There's no money for any of the sick cats that are dying there but yet she's taking the money for these new cats and Anne's cats right now. There's still 30 cats in Anne's apartment that are probably in really bad shape. Con concerning the dogs, after the condition of the dogs I took in from Anne, I can imagine the 30 cats that are still in that apartment are pretty pitiful, but she's probably scrambling to hide Anne's cats right now. So by Wednesday the 29th when the city comes in to do an inspection, chances are there will be no more cats there. So... Uh, we were trying to find a solution before the 29th, before the city comes in there, and, you know, they all end up being brought to the Berger Blanc for, you know, because the stuff is being put out on the street. Um, we were kind of hoping to avoid the Berger Blanc, but if you're telling me that that's pretty much the only option. I mean, see with Nicholas, see if, you know, if anybody calls me back on that. I mean, you do have the annex. I don't know what that's used for, but it's, I always understood it was used for emergencies, seizures, hey, okay, and whatnot. Okay, sorry, sorry. I, 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 sorry, I've got to go. I'm in the middle of doing stuff. I'm trying to get things finished before before evening tonight. I, I promise you I will speak to Nicholas about it and ask that he uh, be considered and get back to you because, as I said, it isn't, it's not my decision. All right, sounds good. Okay, bye. Thanks, bye.